Uh, Coach Lyon, Lawrence District High School. <laughs> you know, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I just want to uh, uh, mention a couple things. I uh, was able to talk to Coach King on the phone yesterday for, oh, probably close to 30 minutes to an hour, and uh, especially at the high school level, um, and I, I'm sure Coach Nichols can uh, maybe attest to that, and yeah, collegiately, I don't know, um, but but class is becoming uh, a lost art. Um, a lot of the names that I hear bounced around for jobs uh, uh, are people that, honestly, if I think you stood and looked at the man in the mirror, you really wouldn't want to them coaching your son. And, uh, you know, I, I hear names constantly being thrown out for, for high school jobs across the state and, and a lot of the guys I know personally. Um, and it's, uh, you know, again, uh, class is becoming uh, uh, not as uh, prevalent uh, a character trait that's important to a lot of people uh, in the hiring process. Um, it's more about, you know, what can you do for me now and how can we win now? And, uh, and it's sad, but that's just the truth. Um, and uh, Scott, I think it, it says all anybody needs to know about you for you being here today. Um, there's many people that would have chosen not to be. And uh, Coach Nichols, I admire you too, man. Um, from 0 and 11 to now, there's a lot of folks that would have cashed in the chips and and uh, we wouldn't have been able to stand here and say what you just said um, with, the, with the young men that you've got. And, and you know, and I've watched your program forever. I've known you since 1997, my first year coaching at Greenwood. And uh, it's, uh, it's awesome that we have, you know, and I'm certainly not speaking for myself, but we have some class folks in this room. Um, and that's just not limited to coaches. But appreciate you guys very much. Um, as far as the season, uh, we lost the last game uh, last week to Greenwood, 12 to six. Um, it's frustrating. Uh, we kind of, you know, I don't really know how to describe it without sounding like I'm making an excuse. Um, we had some some injuries along the way that, you know, we lost our fullback in week five, which offensively really kind of decimated us. Um, lost our quarterback on play two of the Greenwood game the week before, um, which was enormously frustrating. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes when those type things happen, you have to just, you know, grin and bear it for the sake of the ones that are still out there on the field playing. Um, and it's not anything that we talked about in any other room um, other than our own. And, uh, but our guys played, and if you watched our game this past week at Greenwood, I think you saw a sign of, of great things to come if it was indicative, by, uh, indicative of their effort level and just if you were on the sideline, especially the last couple weeks, just the, the togetherness and the chemistry and the vibe that if you look back and, and you're just not just mad as a snake, which I was because I hate to lose, but you see that, hey, this is going to be all right. Um, and it's because of the seniors that I brought today um, and some other ones that have bought in Maybe not at first, maybe it took a while, but by the end, uh, the Lawrence Raiders were a family. And uh, it was awesome to see, again, the school board didn't necessarily reflect it. Um, you know, we were a team of streaks this year. We won six in a row, and then we lost five in a row. Um, part of that, honestly, is because of who we played. Um, the way the schedule was set up, we played uh, a six-game run of teams that just weren't as good as the ones we played at the end. But um, we were in every game except for one, um, and even that game, um, it, you know, we did some things on early that kind of snowballed on us as we moved forward. But, you know, the Greenwood game the other night, two minutes left to go, we recovered the onside kick, and we're offsides. Um, you know, so it was a little uh, frustrating. We, we were not very good offensively uh, the last several weeks. Um, that's the part I'm, you know, I'm in charge of everything, but I call the play. So there's certainly nobody else to blame but myself. And, uh, you know, I can talk about injuries. I can talk about whatever the heck I want to talk about. But the end result was that we weren't able to find a way to get it done. And, uh, but um, it was exciting to see the demeanor and the, the attitude 
and uh, just the how much they cared portion of, of, of what I witnessed on the sideline the last few weeks. And, and that's when you know that from here on out, it's going to be okay. And uh, it, it enormously excited about this all season and moving forward. The players that, that I brought with us, and I, Quadre, you stand up. Quadre Smith uh, was one of our starting corners all year. He's an excellent football player. Um, probably one of the kids that I leaned on the most this year is uh, he is brutally honest. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that tell you what you want to hear. You know, there's a lot of people that come up to you after you lose and say it's going to be okay. Well, no, it's not going to be. We just lost and losing, you know. I, I don't like that. I know it's, it's great to be that way. Um, but I'm a realist, and, and when we lose, you know, to me, the world has come to an end sometimes. And um, I know that's a terrible way to be, and I usually get over it after Saturday morning in a pouting. But um, Quadre was a great guy in the locker room. Um, we've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. I love that kid to death. Um, I hope he gets into coaching one day because he'd be awesome at it um, because he, he is honest. He doesn't sugarcoat things. He doesn't dance around the truth. And he isn't afraid to call any of his teammates out. And that is a rare trait in today's world. And we appreciate Quadre. Quadre broke his foot, um, what was it, the week before the Greenville game. Um, and uh, he told my wife, uh, he said, don't worry about it, I'm, I'm going to be back out there. This is a six-week injury, injury. He broke his what, fifth meta-something. And uh, he, uh, he, he ended up. The last game was able to get in some, and uh, I'm not so sure he didn't lie to the doctors, but um, I, you know, I don't blame you if you did, brother. You, you deserve to be back out there. Um, but we appreciate you very much. The second one we brought is Nathan Mann, um, and uh, I knew it was Clemson, Carolina Day, so I told him it'd be okay if they wanted to wear the garb. But um, Nathan, I could say a lot of the same things I just said about Quadri about him. Uh, started out the year at linebacker. Um, and honestly, I, I was worried whether he would waver on, on whether this was something he wanted to do long term. Um, we moved him to defensive end, and by the end of the year was probably playing as well as anybody that we had. Um, I've told him personally several times how proud I was of him, of, of accepting a role that may not have been the role that he wanted to start with, but embraced it, didn't complain, and ended up being pretty darn good at the position that he played. Broke his hand a couple weeks ago. Put on a cast and just went at it. Um, and, you know, I, if you were at our Greenwood game this past week, there are several uh, Greenwood offensive players that know exactly who number 40 is. And uh, <laughs> I can think of one hit early in the game that was, uh, you know, one that, you know, if I were you, man, I'd, I'd dub that and take it. So when your kid tells you that you didn't play football and you're lying about it, you'll have it. But, um, you know, that, that was awesome. But Nathan's a great student, great, just a great member of the, of the Lawrence community. Uh, we plan on going to Clemson next year, which, you know, being a Clemson guy myself, I fully support. And, uh, you know, it's awesome, and uh, we appreciate him being here. Um, the last one I brought, uh, he came in looking like Steve Spurrier Jr. with the visor and everything. Um, uh, it's Nick Babb. Uh, again, uh, I think Coach King and I thought a lot alike here. Um, with Jonathan, correct, that you brought. Uh, uh, Nick's a lot uh, very similar. Um, he came to me last year when I first got here, um, you know, standing there in like a little Navy ROTC shirt, you know, weighing a buck oh five and telling me he wants to play football. And I'm thinking, well, that's great, son. I appreciate you, you know, wanting to do that. And, and uh, he's never played football in his life. Um, and he made it through the entire year, um, which was amazing to me because there's a lot of people that say they want to do things to the first time their head gets tilted sideways. And uh, now, Nick's a politician, too. He's very smart. You know, the day before we started Oklahoma drills, he asked me if he could be a long snapper. And uh, uh, true story, uh, he, he saw Nathan standing on the other side of the, of the, we call it spider drill, but it's the same thing. And, and uh, but uh, very smart kid. I'm very blessed to just have him as part of my life. And, and, and what I think he showed a lot of people that, hey, if you really want to do this, it can be done. We were able to get him in the last game at Greenwood, and you know that was awesome. Just to, I think they started a bad, bad, bad chant in the stands, and we were losing, which you know um, that was cool. And uh, Nick, we appreciate you, buddy, and I appreciate you for sticking it out because there's not very many people that would have.
Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for having me this year. Look forward to many years to come. Thank you, Coach Liner. And let's give another round of applause to our local coaches. Thanks for all you do. All right. Uh, Lawrence Academy, I know they finished up their season just prior to the last meeting, and uh, we did get an update from them that day, so uh, they're not with us today.